Welcome to another time of learning to live the dominion life. And let's go ahead and start with prayer. Father, we thank you for this day and for your blessings. Open our eyes and our ears and our hearts to receive what you have for us. Help us to create that stone wall and live the life that you've designed for us to live. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Okay, so we've been going through the way that they should go. Okay, print it out. Feel free to print it off the internet. These things are free, even though they're copyright. If you want to give a donation because you downloaded one, go right ahead. It helps us with expenses, but there there isn't a fee. Okay, so right now we're on lesson number nine in the training. So number one says, train your child to have a stone wall in their speech. So today we're going to be talking about speech. What kind of things we should be talking about? All right, encourage frequent, unashamed talk about the Lord. This should be daily, if not multiple times a day. That means talk about the Lord with your family, no matter where you're at or what you're doing. And our first scripture is located in Psalms. So let's look up Psalms. And this is Psalms 145. Verse 5. All right. So, listen. It says, I will speak of the glorious honor of thy majesty and of thy wondrous works. Okay? So, what should we talk about? Uh, the glorious uh, honor of uh, thy majesty, majesty and of thy wondrous work. That's right. So the glory of his majesty and the wonders of his work. Just a little while ago we were talking about the wonders of God's works and seeing people healed and recently seeing um, a gal in the store who was having a lot of trouble with her allergies and then all of a sudden she's amazed that she can breathe and she's not tearing up anymore and her throat's not scratching and she's not coughing and then she's all excited and well maybe he'll just heal me all over yes he can heal you all over so god is awesome so the kingdom of heaven came to her that day all right on to number three discourage repeated worldly slang and sentence structure okay I see some eyebrows, like, what are you talking about? Like, oh, man, shoot, um, back in the 70s, give me some skin. You know, little slang, meaningless. How are you doing? Well, if you don't mean how are you doing, then yes. There's also some stuff like saying, oh, that's bad when it's really good or you know that's awfully good so anyway so let's look at our next scripture this is jeremiah so if you're in psalms you're going to go over to the right to jeremiah and we're going to go to jeremiah chapter 10 and we're looking at verse 2 and it says thus saith the lord learn not the ways of the heathen and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven for the he the heathen are dismayed at them. Okay, so what are we to not learn? The ways, the ways of the heathen. That's right. The ways of the heathen. Who are the heathen? What does that mean? Um, heathen are not saved. So it means people who are not following Jesus Christ. Sinners can be Christians if they're not totally. Really? Yeah, you could sin sometimes. They can't be sinners, though. Sinners oh, doesn't right. make any sense. Sinners saved by grace. Okay, where, where will sin? Remember, God has... Jesus was sent to save us from sin, not to save us in sin. Ooh. Okay? How are we to react to the signs in heaven? Not to be dismayed. That's right. Be not dismayed. That means don't be like, oh, oh like... You know, last year, the blood moons and so many people were freaking out. Oh, God's going to be coming back. Oh, this is a sign. Don't be dismayed. Don't be freaking out. God's Word also tells you, just like you know by 
just looking at stuff that spring is coming. You know, the trees are budding. Flowers are starting to grow again. Oh, yeah, so will you know the tree. seasons of when the Son of Man shall return. Okay, so number four, discourage impulsive speech and constant speech. This is something that I had a conversation with some of my family members about yesterday. And let's turn over to James. We're going to go way over to the right in our Bible. Okay, so this is almost at the very back of the book. All right, so we're looking at James chapter 1, verse 19. And it says... Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to wrath. So how are we to hear? Swift. Yeah. Swift. Be quick to listen to what somebody's telling you, okay? How are we to speak and to become angry or show wrath? Slow. 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 Now, is being angry... Are angered and wrath the same thing? No. No. No, they're not. And in many of the versions of the Bible, it says become angry versus wrath. Wrath has action to it. It's like revenge. You know, doing harm to somebody else. Returning evil for evil. Okay? Let's look at Proverbs for our next question. So we're going all the way back to the left again, about halfway through your Bible. Okay? And we're looking at Proverbs chapter 25. And we're going to look at verse 20a. And it says, He that hath no rule over his own spirit is like a city that is broken down and without walls. Let's hear that again. He that hath no rule over his own spirit is like a city that is broken down and without walls. A person without self-control is like what? A city that is broken down and without walls. That's right. It's like a city that is broken down and doesn't have walls. And back then, there was a wall around the city to help protect you from harm and danger. So if you don't have self-control, you have no defense against the ways of the world, against Satan, against the temptations. Okay, so now we're going to go back over to the right, and we're going to go to 1 Corinthians. Okay, and we're going to go to chapter 9, and we're going to go to verse 27, and it says, But I keep under my body and bring it into subjection, least that by any means... When I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. Let's listen to that again. But I keep under my body and bring it into subjection. That means we discipline our body and we take control. We tell our body what to do and it doesn't tell us what to do. And it says, least by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. So if we don't have self-control... We may have told other people the good news, but then we find ourselves cast away because we didn't bear fruit because we couldn't have self-control. Okay? What is bearing fruit anyway? Bearing fruit? As in a book that we're reading, when you present the gospel of Jesus Christ to somebody else and they receive it, and it's a true conversion. It's not just it's a true conversion and not just an experience. Then they're excited. They're truly changed. And they want that change for somebody else. So they're bearing fruit. You being used by the Lord to lead somebody to Christ, that's fruit. Them wanting more to know. Is your fruit bearing fruit? Okay. What are we to do with our bodies? Bring them unto subjection. Yes, that's right. That means they're subject to what you tell it to do. Not 
what your flesh nature wants to tell you what to do. You say, uh-uh, uh You're not in charge. Feelings, you're not in charge. Flesh, you're not in charge. Desires, you're not in charge. What should be in charge? God. God. Okay, so let's go to the right a little bit over to Ephesians. Where is our next one? And we're going to go Ephesians chapter 4. And we're going to be in verse 29. And verse 29 says, Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. Let no corrupt communications proceed out of your mouth. So, a little bit would be okay, right? No. no. You're right. It says no. Okay? So, what should not come out of your mouth? Corrupt communication. That's right. Anything that is not pure, lovely, good report, having any virtue, praiseworthy. What sort of things are true, um, honest, just, Pure, lovely, good report, having any virtue and praiseworthy. Those are things that we should think on. And as a man thinketh, so is he. Out of the abundance of the heart, the man speaks. So whatever's in your heart comes out your mouth. So if what's in your heart is things that are true, honest, just, pure, lovely, good report, having any virtue and praiseworthy, that's going to be what's coming out of your mouth and not the corrupt communications. Okay? What should our words do to others who hear them? Oh, grace. Okay. It should be... Um, Good to those of edifying that may minister grace unto the hearers. All right. It's good to edifying. Edifying means to build up. Instead of tearing people down with your words, you're using your words to build them up. Many people already feel like they're torn down and smashed into the ground. They need people to give them words that bring life and edify them. But don't make them go on the pedestal. No, you don't want to elevate them. It doesn't say elevate. It says edify. There's a difference between elevation and and edification. Elevation is what Satan wanted to do. I am God. Worship me too. Well, he got fired because he elevated himself. God says edification, encouragement, provoking others to do good works. Okay? Expect speech that reflects the character of Jesus Christ. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, truthfulness, dependability, faithfulness, thankfulness, pure, honest, just, lovely, things that are a good report, and so on. See Galatians 5. 23 to 23 in Philippians 4a gives you a nice good list of what these characters should be like. Now we're going to look at Titus and we're going to go to our right again. Okay, you're going to pass through your Thessalonians and your Timothys and you're going to jump right to Titus. And we're going to do Titus chapter 2 and we're going to go to verse 8. And it says, sound speech that cannot be condemned, that he that is of the contrary part may be ashamed having no evil thing to say of you. So what kind of speech are we to have? Sound speech, speech that cannot, cannot be condemned. Condemned, that's right. So if we have what's coming out of us are those good things, there's nothing there for somebody else to say, oh, well, he said, okay. Well, if what's coming out of your mouth is good stuff, all they can say is, well, he said that she did a good book report in class. That's not easy to turn to be evil, right? Well, he was being sarcastic. But if we only say 
what is true, honest, just, pure, lovely, good report, having any virtue, and praiseworthy. Then it won't be hard. showing everybody the love of Christ. Then there won't be anything there that can be condemned. Okay, so let's look at First Timothy, which is to the left, and we're going to go to First Timothy chapter six. And we're going to look at verses 3 and 5. And it says, If any man teach otherwise and consent not to hold some words. So that means, if any man teach otherwise, so teach in some other way, and consent, that means agree, not to hold some words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the doctrine which is according to godliness, he is proud knowing nothing but doting about questions and trifles of words wherefore cometh envy strife railings evil surmising perverse <clears throat> disputing of men of corrupt minds and destitute of the truth supposing that gain is godliness from such withdraw thyself. Okay, so does anything good come out of a person with unwholesome words? No. No, there doesn't. What are we to do around unwholesome speech? Withdraw. Withdraw. What does it mean to withdraw? Uh, walk away. Okay, everybody withdraw from the table. <laughs> yes. Get away. Okay. Don't come back though. Don't <laughs> come back from it. Because this stuff has a tendency to stick to you. Okay? Like a sticker. Right. Remember, bad company corrupts good morals. Mm -hmm. James 119 is the scripture verse to remember. Be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to wrath. Okay? So always be willing to quickly hear what somebody has to say, but be slow to speak. Don't want to try to say what you think they're going to say or try to answer them before they had a chance to say what they're going to say because you know what? We don't always know, okay? So thank you for joining us for Lesson 9. And if you need healing... Take your hand and place it where you need to be healed at. Or put your mind on that spot. And in the name of Jesus Christ, be healed. And in the name of Jesus Christ, body, function, normal. Now, you go do what you couldn't do before. And we'll see you next time.